Hello, good evening and welcome. It's Wednesday, it's seven o'clock and it's time to meet a business hero. Um, today, yes, I'm Richard Wraith and this is the Business Hero Show. So today we're talking about alternative medicine and can how it can help you be more effective in your business. Um, and who better to speak to about that, alternative medicines and therapies, than someone who spent 18 years as a community th- pharmacist? <laughs> pharmacist, <laughs> she's going to kill me for saying that. A community <laughs> pharmacist and, and is now a homeopath. Uh, so please give it up and welcome to the show, Neela Prabhu of Homeopathic Harmony. Welcome, Neela. Hi, Rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone go crazy. <laughs> welcome to our effect. three viewers as well. Lovely to have you with us. Um, see if we can get double digits by the end of the show. Okay, um, cool. Neela. Um, yes. Homeopath and uh, community pharmacist and alternative therapies and medicines. Um, yes. It's quite, quite a mouthful, isn't it? For um, you, yeah. <laughs> everything's a mouthful <laughs> for me. Um, why don't we start by, tell, tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what you do. Okay. Um, so I'm a homeopath. So homeopathy is a holistic form of alternative medicine, um, which date back, dates back over 200 years. So I help people achieve optimum vitality um, by using homeopathy. So as you said before, my background, um, I did spend 18 years being a drug dealer, you know, uh, a community <laughs> pharmacist. I'm, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Wrong button. Oh, no. <laughs> Wrong button. Yeah. Terrible joke. <laughs> terrible joke. Um, uh. So I do appreciate and, and have that knowledge of, you know, traditional medicine as well as um, the alternative medicine that I've studied. So, yeah, that's that's what I do. Happy days. Dickie's Fitness joins us. Who on earth is Dickie's Fitness? Do you know who that is? Is uh, that one of your friends? Hey, Neil, right. no, no pressure, No pressure, Rich. Rich. Well, no. whoever you are, um, wonderful to have you on. Great to have you with us this evening. Um, but um, yeah, so um, that's that's a bit about Neela and what she does. Um, and apologies for hitting the wrong button there. That joke was actually quite funny. <laughs> um, so to get things kick started today, uh, if we could ask the audience, um, sounds like signing off if he wants to be a millionaire, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, if we if we we're could ask the audience friends. a question, I know, right? Um, I'll phone a friend. I'll just leave you run the show. Um, oh, thanks. Thanks. <coughs> that's all right. You're better at it than me. Um, so to kick things off, if we ask the audience, do you ever feel like you're not operating quite 100%? Do you ever feel like you go for a long stretch of time where you just think, ugh, um, or you just sort of, you're trying your best, but you just feel that something is not either not quite right or you just, no matter how hard you try, you feel like you're just, you're just hitting sort of 60, 70, 80% and you're just not quite, you don't quite feel yourself or as chirpy as everyone else around you might seem to feel. Um, some might say this down to old age and just being very grumpy, um, or as people just <laughs> keep telling me that. <laughs> You're a grumpy old sod, Rick. No, 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 it's not that. Uh, that's just <laughs> that's me at 100%. Yeah, <laughs> that's, me operating. Yeah. that's me operating at 100%, <laughs> that is. Um, but, um, yeah, do you ever feel like you're not quite the full um, the full lunchbox as well, you know, the full the full packet? Uh, um, and, you know, you're one, one slate no, short of a roof tile. Yeah, that that <laughs> let's let's not start calling people crazy. That's that's not good. No, no, I didn't I didn't mean it in that respect. Um, you know, a sandwich short of a lunchbox. You're not quite it's not crazy, just you haven't got as much energy or or exactly. you're not quite as well, you know. Yeah. Um it's like when you eat and you don't feel full. Uh but um you know, do you ever any of you ever feel like that? You ever feel like you're not quite the full hundred percent and uh, you just wish you had that little bit more energy or um or that your health was just that little bit better, uh, just so you could function on f- firing on all cylinders, as I say. Yeah, that's, um, that's a good analogy. Yeah. Cool. I've got finally got a good analogy in there. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we got there twenty-five in the end. terrible well, ones. <laughs> yeah. If you're listening to this on the podcast, by the way, I apologise for the two minutes of terrible analogies that I've just thrown at you there. Um, you probably switched it off by now. <laughs> but um, yeah, Susan says not firing on all cylinders. Indeed. <laughs> Oh uh, dear, we do try and make, make people laugh on this show as well. Uh, we do try and have a bit of relaxing, bit of fun. Um, but yeah, you know, if you ever feel like that, let us know in the comments um, on the live chat and tell us why. Tell us why you feel like that. What do you feel is is um, holding you back or not quite running at 100%? Um, 
you know, a battery that just won't quite charge up to its to its best potential. Um, I'd love to. I'd be very curious and love to hear what people's thoughts are on that. Um, but as you can tell, this is an area of um, a topic that I know absolutely squat about. So I'm going to trip over a lot of words today because I have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> which is why we have the wonderful Nina with us. Um, yeah. So if we could, um, if if people are wondering, well, okay, alternative therapies, Rich, um, alternative medicines, what's all that about? Um, so why don't I shut the hell up, and as much as every guest has asked me to do every week, and um, yep. let Nina explain to you what is alternative medicine and therapies. Okay, thanks, Rich. Um, yeah, so a lot of people um, may have heard of the expression CAM medicine. So CAM is an acronym, it's so C-A-M, so it stands for Complementary and Alternative Medicines. So it's a bit of an umbrella term, um, and homeopathy is one sort of you know, part, you know, one branch of the tree that comes under that umbrella. So you've also got um, Reiki, you've got acupuncture, osteopathy, crystal healing, um, you know, Ayurvedic medicine, which is traditional medicine in India. So there's quite a few, um, you know, systems at play, the Chinese five element system. And some people may have heard of some of them. Some people may have heard of all of them. Some people might have heard of what is Nila talking about. Um, but that's the whole point that, the word alternative means that they are designed to be used alongside traditional medicine. It's, you know, in some, some people feel that they can replace them totally, which is fab. Um, but, you know, if someone's, for example, having a heart attack, I'm not going to, you know, wave a herb at them. I'm going to call an ambulance and send them to a &E, you know. <laughs> There's no witchcraft, um, right? Well, yeah, no, there isn't. Uh, <laughs> That's only um, for once it goes really bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's it's being pragmatic, but a lot of my patients have said that um, because I, I know about the traditional medicine, um, you know, I don't have to look it up in a book. I don't have to. I know yeah. which tablets they're taking, what strengths, why the doctors prescribed it. Um, and they, they find that that's um, like a good um, balance between between traditional and alternative. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So your background as a pharmacist really sort of as the second they start telling you what they're taking straight away, your brain's like, yep, know what all that's about. Exactly. Um, happy yeah. days. Um, and well, out of interest, um, one thing I've been curious of ever since you first told me is, what is a community pharmacist? <laughs> so, so it's a pharmacist who works in a shop normally. No. So the distinction. <laughs> so the <laughs> Talk distinction about ask a stupid is, question, right? <laughs> well, that's, that's fine. So obviously, you have po uh, pharmacists who work in hospitals. Um, you have pharmacists oh. who work in industry, so in research. Um, there's lots of things you can do with a pharmacy degree um, that you even have um, pharmacists who work in GP practices as well. So oh. it's, yeah, exactly. So it, people think that all we do is count and pour, but there's a little bit more to it than that. We have done a four, well, I did a three year degree. It's now a four year degree. So it's actually a master's degree now. Um, mm. So yeah, we have a little bit of knowledge about medicines, you know. Just just a smidge, right? Oh, yeah. Enough, enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't even know there was different types of pharmacists. Well, it's it's what you um, specialize in, I suppose. Um, uh, you know, I saw a really good mem about it saying, you know, be nice to your pharmacist. We're we're paid to know legal, lethal combinations of drugs, um, and it's mm. kind of true. So yeah, you know. be careful what you wish for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so as a community pharmacist, like the, the person that you see in the local um, yep in the chemist shop, shop That's opposite the, the one. doctor surgeries normally. Yes. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. oh, that makes more sense. Um, okay. You see, those of us who don't have degrees and letters after our names and stuff like that, well. you know, we don't, we're just like, oh, what? what What does she do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um, but it's oh, cool. It, so it, that's, that's, sorry. See, this no, I was, was going to say it's the, it's the, yeah, it's the main um, port of call for a lot of people. They, you know, especially um, you know, if they don't want, don't want to bother the doctor, you know, they've got some, you know, minor ailment you know if they've got like you know mouth ulcers or they've got a headache or you know they've sprained their ankle those kind of things you don't really need to go and see the doctor about it um yeah. you know if, if if your leg's fallen off then yeah possibly you know you might want to you know but Fight that's where <laughs> yeah that's where people mo a lot of you know majority of our um cust you know patients would come into the community pharmacy and say well have you got anything for this and you know this is my right. you know children or elderly people um and yeah people yeah, with ailments and aches and pains and yeah and we've got more time to speak to 
Um, GPs, unfortunately, are very overstretched and they've only got seven minutes per consultation um, to mm. see them. And obviously, you don't need an appointment to go and see your pharmacist. So, yeah. But um, a lot of good ones you do have to stand outside and wait for ages. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not here to talk about pharmacy. So no, no, indeed, indeed. No. Um, so essentially, it's all the sort, all the sort of things that are um, complementary to or non-critical, like non-NHS requirements, or would that be? A- yeah, I mean, the, if you're asking who are the patients that I see, they fall into two main categories, and. The first category is people who know about alternative therapies or they've been recommended by a friend, um, you know, and they've used them before and they go, yeah, I know what this is about. You know, that's fine. Yep. Need to go and see my homeopath. Need to go and see my acupuncturist. Absolutely. And they cool. use that as part of keeping themselves at 100 percent. So the 100 percent that you mm. mentioned before firing all the cylinders, you know, that it's maintenance. Um, the yeah. other portion of people are people who are desperate. Basically, they've tried everything else. They've, you know you know, been through the NHS that, you know, tried all the, you know, different therapies and they're like, Do you know what, I my problem still isn't fixed. I'm not, I'm mm. not happy or run out of ideas I, or such. Yeah. I mean, there's only, you know, doctors have limited tools in their toolbox. And if you get to the end of that toolbox and the doctors kind of shrug their shoulders and go, well, and the patient's going, but I don't like the side effects of this or this one didn't work. The, the mm. doctors don't have any other tools. And quite often people would then start looking for alternatives and you know, as mm. the name suggests, it's alternative. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, those are the two sort of categories. But, qu- yeah, we can help with, um, obviously, the minor ailments, and they tend to heal quite quickly. Um, but the longer-term things, um, quite often that doctors, they sort of shrug their shoulder and go, yeah, I don't really know why you've got that. Mm. We're, sorry, we can't help you. Quite often, it what I do is not a quick fix. I'm very upfront about that. I'm not sticking a sticky plaster on a broken leg. I'm looking for the root cause. Okay. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'll, I'll give the example of headaches. Um, you know, everyone gets headaches. No, we don't want a headache. Don't give me a headache. I'm not going to give you one. No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, everyone suffers with headaches now and then, you know, depending on, you know, you could, you know, haven't been drinking water or you just have a tablet and you think, right, I'll just get through it. If you then start to notice that you're having regular headaches, and you think, hang on a minute, this is, this is, you know, I'm noticing this is becoming more frequent or, you know, more regular. And mm. some people are quite happy to just pop pills and off they go and they just accept it as part of their life. If they come and see me and say, Neil, I'm, I'm regularly suffering with headaches. It's I'll not a long term like, solution though, is it? It's not. No, you don't absolutely. You don't want to become dependent on your little white friends, as it were. It's, um, for some people, they accept that as a way of life and, um you know, they they maybe don't realise that there's alternatives out there that can help Mm. them and they can be free of headaches, you know. Um, So, but it's, it takes time. It takes time for me to, Mm. to find what the root cause is and start Mm. dealing with it. So. Would you say, uh, and a personal question now, um, would you say, I know, right? Um, (laughs) Would you say that. Gin, the answer's gin, the answer's gin. Oh, the answer's, no, not always. The answer's gin, no? Okay. (laughs) 42? Um, No. But. Would you say that um, a chiropractor would be classed as alternative therapy? Yeah, I, th- I think they would uh, in a similar vein to um, osteopathy. So they are mm. dealing with, you know, spinal alignment and mm. um, it's maintenance. It's, you know, you don't just go to the chiropractor once and go, there you go, you're all fixed. I know. Um, it's, it's, you know, human beings, you know, as we've evolved, um, <laughs> You know, we're, our closest relatives, you know, 97 percent, some say 99 percent, um, our DNA is the same as chimpanzees and bonobo monkeys. You know, so they you, you are obviously not. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not, not walking around. They're not walking around on two feet. So uh, millions of years of evolution. Then we're, we're very sedentary. We're sitting at desks. You know, we're driving all of this sort of thing. Mm. It's not good for us. So if you then go and see a chiropractor on a regular basis, and have those small spinal adjustments made, overall, yeah. you will probably suffer less backache or less aches and pains, mm. or they will pick it up much quicker, nip it in the bud yeah. and go, oh, well, actually, that was out of line. Rather than you, you know, people who um, who have back problems, you know, or their back goes, they'll say, oh, I yeah. only dropped a pencil. And, and I went down to pick it up and, oh, my back went. Well, mm. it's not the time that you dropped the pencil. It's the 99 times before that you, you were misusing your back and your back mm. thought, you know what? No. So literally, yeah. you know, the, the straw or the pencil that broke yeah. the camel's back. Um, and that, and that yeah. Your Honour, is why I wrote my novel on the floor. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I've, I, you know, I've seen a chiropractor for a couple of years, hmm. um, and the work he's done has been has been marvelous. And I, w- I yeah. was literally dependent on painkillers every day. Uh, so there you go. You know, you, there you go. You, know, you do a bit of overexertion in the garden, um, damage your damage your spinal discs, which is something that you do not recover from. Um, no. And um, yeah, I mean, at one point, if you'd have seen me six, seven years ago. Um, I was someone who could barely walk. Yeah. Um, I, I, it would take me about half an hour to make it 50 feet down the road. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. And um, after starting to see a chiropractor, um, first few sessions, obviously quite painful. Um, mm. But, um, yeah, I'm just bambling yeah. around like I'm- a normal person now. No painkillers, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but, you know, that that those kind of stories are... Um, you know, people think, oh, it's anecdotal and, you know, it's, there is evidence behind it, um, you mm. know, for, for, for all, you know, for, for most of the alternative um, yeah. systems. So, and I think this is probably going to come on to the next, um, the point. So I'll yeah. shut up now until no, you no, just, the next point. But I um, just wanted to, I just wanted to give it a good relationship to how actually the NHS isn't always the answer to everything. Um, yeah, and I I think you know people feel it's either the doctor or nothing. Yes, well, actually, well they're not. Yeah, they're they're not. They're either not aware or they they feel oh I don't want to go and pay someone necessarily because for a lot of people hmm. the NHS is free. Um, but it sometimes is needed, and you know we all know that the NHS is overstretched, un, you know underfunded. Hmm. Um, they don't have enough time, you know, midwives are doing the job of, you know, three midwives, you know, the GPs have got seven minutes to see you, that they're, they're all struggling, really struggling. Mm. Um, and that's not the individual person's fault by any means. No, it's, 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 it's the pressure it's they're under, isn't it? But equally, if you are having a long-term um, issue, the NHS is not great at maintenance they're, they're great if you've you know you've had a, you've been run over by a bus or you've had a heart attack or you know yeah. broken your leg you know those kind they're of emergencies absolutely big emergency building under blue lights and, and making sure yeah. you don't die but the maintenance part quite often and I, I think a lot of um you know people watching this will resonate is you know you went to your doctor for painkillers they possibly gave you something called cocodamol which has got codeine in which constipates you okay you then take they then give you another drug, so lactulose, which is a laxative to make you go. You then get dehydrated, so they then you then get a urinary tract infection. They give you antibiotics, and you're like, well, hang on a minute. It, you've got like five drugs, and actually no one's asked you, well, why was your back hurting? What, what did you do to your back to make it yeah, hurt? Yeah. They've just given you painkillers, and off you go. So yeah. it, it's that, that polypharmacy that we see. You don't know that, my doctor, do you? <laughs> <laughs> possibly, possibly, yeah. You've seen my notes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah. I've seen it, you know countless times on prescriptions mm. that you have you know yeah. um another drug to counteract the side effects of the first one um mm. you know the old woman who's you see, a fly fine, but I can't get for Lou now. <laughs> yeah absolutely and it's, but you know people have lives mm. you've got jobs to go to they've got yeah. children they've got you know they can't be um you know they'll give you a drug and say oh well you're pain free and you're like yeah but i'm completely spacey and i'm really drowsy i can't take yeah, care yeah. of my children or go to work or drive and, and they're like oh well spaced out 24 7 yeah it's yeah. it's not, it's not um, a way to function yeah it's not a way to live it's existing yeah, you, but not living you, so that's exactly you read my mind she, she's good isn't she oh she read my mind as well. <laughs> i was just gonna say well there's existing and living but she beat me to it hey it's, it's the almost witchcraft. Like you, yeah, you, yeah you'd scarily think we'd practice this but we haven't <laughs> um so susan makes a good point she says okay so mm-hmm. i often not just doesn't fire i often not fire on all cylinders Having yep. C- I'm not sure what CFS is. Chronic chronic fatigue syndrome, I'm guessing. Okay, yeah, that makes yep. sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yep. So she says, uh, having CFS, I often yep. describe it described it as the battery is so low and has run out, it's unable to recharge, or the light's gone out and yep. they won't relight. Yeah. Um, my um, my homeopath son actually suffers with chronic fatigue, so I do know a lot about it. Vitamin D hmm. injection, excuse me, vitamin B12 injections are fab for chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, mm. but yeah, obviously in homeopathy, we treat people as individuals. So if I had two people suffering with that or headaches or whatever it was, and you know, the doctor may give them the same painkiller, I wouldn't give them the same remedy because they're two different mm. people, even individual Please. twins. So Get into the cause first, right? Yeah. Uh, awesome. 
Um, yeah, so, you know, hopefully, Susan, there's something you can take away from today's show. Um, so that'd be nice. <coughs> Excuse me. That's right. Um, so that's a rather um, extensive um, yes. just description of alternative medicines and therapies, if you like. Yeah. Uh, we went a bit overboard, right, didn't we? <laughs> we did, right. Come on, move on, move on. Point number two. Okay, okay, I'm doing as I'm told. <laughs> yeah. I like her. She keeps me in order, see. Otherwise we won't right, come on, that's hours. it. So let's, let's have a little quick look at the history of alternative medicines because, you know, drugs and painkillers have only been around for so long, right? Yeah, they have. Uh, so um, if you put the people. picture up, uh, the slide, Richard. There we go. Let's <laughs> push the button. Let's, push the button. Let's push, okay. There we go. That's the right button. There, there we, go. we go. That's the one. Right. So as you can see there, so acupuncture that I mentioned has been around since 100 BC. So pretty long time. The Chinese five element system is 476 BC, which is intricately linked with the um, Chinese acupuncture. Ayurveda um, originated in India and is still Who? going, and that's... <laughs> oh, say that again. Uh, Ayurvedic. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So that's the... Yep. Yeah, so that's been going for 5,000 years. Okay, so a pretty from? long time from India. Ah. That's where... That's So my parents were born in India, so I was born here, but that's my heritage, so... Okay. Happy days. Yeah. Uh, Reiki is originates in Japan and it was discovered in the 1920s. So mm -hmm. that one again has been, you know, obviously we're around about 100 years just over. Um, and homeopathy, finally at the bottom, I've put um, originated or started um, in 1810. It was a German doctor, Samuel Hahnemann, who um, discovered it's it's basically serial dilution and succussion. I'll explain mm. that in a moment. Um, and yeah. one of the main principles is like cures like. So, for example, a lot of people have heard of arnica, for example, arnica gel or tablets for bruising or shock. Okay, that's the, mm. that's the most popular homeopathic remedy. Um, so if I was to get an arnica flower, mush it up with some water and some alcohol, and I would make what we call a mother tincture, okay? You take one drop of that and put it into 99 drops of water and you bang that bottle on the table firmly, okay? You then take one drop of that solution put it in 99 drops of water and bang it on the table and so on. Okay. Huh. If you do that. Yeah. So this is the serial dilution and the banging on the table is what we call succussion. Okay. So it's, it's what we call potentizing it. All right. So you do that process six times and you get to a, what we call a six C potency. The C refers to centennial because obviously it's been diluted by hundreds. How many hundreds of times has it been diluted? Exactly. Again? Exactly. And yeah. when you go past a six C potency, there are you go past Avogadro's constant, so big word, Richard. What that means is there is That's no original. <laughs> well, I can explain it to you. That what that means is there's no original molecules of the arnica uh, mother tincture left in that solution that you've made. Okay, so huh. this is where yeah, so this is where the scientists quote quote go. Oh, you've diluted, you've super diluted it, and there's nothing left. The thing is, we're not working on a physical level. We are working on an energetic level. OK, so the reason we've we've diluted it down is Hahnemann said the dose makes the poison. OK, so what he obviously we so, for example, belladonna, which is um, deadly nightshade berries. OK, if you have a few, you can have an upset tummy and upset tummy and a bit of a fever. The more you have, you, you can obviously actually poison yourself. But mm. what Hahnemann said was how low a dose can we go and still have a positive effect? And that mm. is why he started diluting things. So there is. This is the reason that homeopathy is so safe, is because you could have the whole keep the poison to a min, the very, very bare minimum. It's yeah, and what happens is you kind of take it into a nano. We're talking nano medicine, okay? So those molecules, water has memory, okay? Anyone who's seen Frozen Two knows that water has memory, okay? <laughs> um, it's true. It's true. So what happens is anyone um, with kids will see that. Yeah. <laughs> Even even if you so for example even your tears okay they've if you um, when you're crying because you're sad if you were to take those tears and then examine them under a microscope or tears when you've been cutting an onion or tears because you're in pain the crystalline structures that you see under that microscope are different to each other you might think oh it's the same tears really? they're not yes okay I've got a, huh. I didn't send you that slide but I I have that slide um, so, so you don't it just, just goes, cry the same tears no matter what you're feeling. No. So what that means is um, you're producing different chemicals for that, but the, the water remembers. So when you're looking at it under a microscope, the, the water has memory. It remembers almost like an echo of the arnica 
or the belladonna and so it energetically speaks to the body so it's a bit like writing a little email and just sending it to the body and saying do you know what can you just sort this out and it has the resources to do so it will do our bodies are a self-healing organism you cut yourself if you have the resources and the energy to to heal you will heal so mm. happy days that was, a bit, that was a bit longer with that but anyway sorry well there's just a lot of, a lot of long words in there so i'm feeling a bit <laughs> <laughs> feeling really but stupid I, now <laughs> this is like when you talk IT to me and you're going oh and I I'm know, going oh God, I understand I what you're talking about Rich I'm paying you the money oh. just you know <laughs> I know when I start talking about long tail keywords and SEO and everyone everyone just looks at me like just what? like glaze <laughs> over what so, yeah at least I explained yeah. <laughs> at least I explained my big words yeah yeah exactly <laughs> the Tell other me. the other thing I would add to that is that when I do uh obviously take someone's case not a lot of people know that sort of past traumas and shocks, um, if they're not cleared from the body, they can present as physical pathology. So physical symptoms can happen because a previous shock or trauma has happened. Right. So if someone so, had like a traumatic childhood. Yeah, or even something, you know, yeah, exactly. Or, you know, someone's broken a bone or someone's had abuse done mm. or someone was in a car accident. They didn't die. But the oh, shock yeah. of that, you know, this sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, gotcha. those are the kind of major incidents mm. that we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. All of those. Can I ask yes. as well? Um, yes. Tell me, tell me to shut up and move on if you, if the answer is no. Um, what's okay. Reiki? I've heard of it Reiki. loads of times, but I've never okay. known. So it Reiki is, is um, it originates in Japan and it is an energy medicine. Okay. So you, it's based on balancing the seven chakra points. So have you heard of the chakra points? Mm, maybe. Sort of. Okay. Honestly, yeah. Okay. So they're used a lot in yoga and in India. My dad's going to kill me for saying chakra wrong. But anyway. Um, <laughs> so you, they're, they're, they're basically energy vortexes. Okay. So you have one that's the crown. You have one that's the brow chakra. You have the throat chakra. Um right. Your solar, sorry, your heart, your solar plexus, your sacrum, which is your tailbone, uh, and your base chakra. Okay, so there's seven mm. in total. If yeah. and they're like energy vortexes. Okay, like imagine a whirlpool. Okay, so if they are out of balance or misaligned or there's you know something wrong there, it mm. can cause um, disturbances in your energy, basically. Mm. Okay, so Reiki works. Um, it works very similar to homeopathy that it works on um, babies children adults animals and plants you can raise so anything because it's energy is that a physical or chemical thing then neither it's it's an energy thing <laughs> so physical okay. and chemical you're talking about something you can physically touch or it's a chemical yeah, reaction something you can touch take or do this or move is, in a certain way or... no and energy is so how can i explain it so it's your your vital force your chi um you know your vitality that's inside you basically we all mm. have that so children are born with 100 percent energy they're a ball of energy yeah. when you're dead you're zero percent energy yeah and sort of you decline yeah. appropriately as you go through does, does that make Alrighty. sense yeah um mm. i can't i can't say i completely understand it um but you don't have sense. to that's that's yeah. the point it's it's the there, practitioners there are... you have to understand it and yeah um if if they can this... help you with with what you're suffering with then yeah. Indeed. And this is one of the things I love about having so many of these wonderful guests on the show is that I don't have to understand what they do or how they do it, um, but I do need to respect it and try to understand it. And actually, by the time we yeah. normally, by the time we get to the end of a show, I actually, I feel a bit greedy because it's me that's getting all the understanding and everyone else well, who's not watching everyone, the show is losing out. <laughs> well, no, they're, they're watching. So whoever's watching. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's like cool. my own private education, having, having wonderful people on the show to explain stuff like this. Um, cool. Right. So, um, number three, next one. Are we at number three already? We are. Yeah. Good. Uh, where is it? Let's, there is. I don't think I did a picture for that. So, yeah. No. Let's hang on. Let's oh, not press hello. that one. Uh, let's press that button there. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Getting better at this. Getting better. Good practice. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, so point number three. Then moving on from the history of all these different um, yeah. therapies and stuff. How can what you actually do? help business owners that's what we're here today to find out right yeah absolutely and i i am a small business owner myself so i know that there's you know you there's times when you you don't necessarily have a team of people you can't be sick you know you've got 
jobs to do, you've got customers to, you know, orders to fulfill, all of those sorts of things. Um, so just one example of that is when, when you're stressed, um, our bodies will um, dump zinc or excrete zinc, okay? So zinc is vital for our immune systems, okay? Mm. So how many times, you know, I, I'm, I've had this and I'm sure everyone else has. So say you're working to a tight deadline or a schedule and you're like, right, I've got to get this order done by, you know, midnight on Monday night for this customer and the carrot that's dangling is oh it's okay Christmas is coming or you know the holiday that I've booked is coming I'm going away for that weekend is coming so mm. like, right I'm just going to keep going keep going and you know maybe not taking care of yourself or sleeping well or you know eating well just because you've got a, this really tight deadline put in and a few extra get- hours a day until the until the holiday sort of thing yeah and then you get to your holiday or Christmas or, or somewhere where you can relax and you're you suddenly find, oh, I've come down with a horrible cold or I've got flu or oh, I've got the, the biggest mouth ulcer ever. And people, it's almost ironic that you think, oh, but I want to relax and enjoy my holiday. And the point is that because you're, you've been stressed all that time and your body's been throwing out zinc because you're stressed, you're then more susceptible to any infections or anything that's about, you know, coughs, colds, all that sort of thing. And your body goes, yeah, I'm relaxing now. So bang, there you go. You're susceptible. Mm. So um, like the endorphins so, and the and the and the uh, what's the other word? Um, um gonna stop you there. Not endorphins. Not endorphins. No, no. Sorry, not endorphins. Good job. I'm not a pharmacist, <laughs> isn't I? Uh, go and take yeah, the box really of endorphins. Is. That'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, box of dolphins, you say? Um, so <laughs> yeah. yeah what's, sorry. What's the, the, um, what's the porpoise of that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was a bad a joke. That was a really bad joke. Yeah. That was a really yeah, there bad you go. joke. You get one of those for that. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that. You see what she did there? Okay. She did uh, that. Yeah. yeah, if you if so when you get to the, that point where you you go on holiday, your uh, yeah. adrenaline if you like that's been keeping you going. Uh, Absolutely. That's, that's the, the word. I was word. Looking well, for. Done. Yeah. well done. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Yeah, yeah me. <laughs> Yay. Exactly. Um, yes. But yeah, so that adrenaline that's been keeping you going motivated by the fact that you're gonna go on a holiday or get a yeah. you know, at the end well, of the Well, you've got this deadline you know, and you've got to meet it. Buying a car yeah. or whatever yeah. you're gonna do. Yeah. Um, that all suddenly, once you relax, your adrenaline yes. levels come down, and yep. then that's when you realise that actually it's been the adrenaline the whole time that's been keeping you going, whilst the rest of your body's been yeah. like, Which, neglecting to, itself. Yeah, and to some extent, that's you know we need adrenaline. It, it gives us our drive and it keeps us going, and you know helps us to run away from the dinosaur. But um, yeah. it over long periods of time, if we are stressed over long periods of time, then that is going to affect your health. So mm. one of the other, there's, there's two other, two other things that I'm going to mention with regards to helping um, businesses. So I run a, a homeopathic first aid course. So I've now just transferred that online that um, you can learn in your own time. I give you a homeopathic basic kit of 18 remedies. Uh, and I, on the course, I teach you how to use those. So you can. Eight, 18 is a basic kit. Correct. Yes. Good Lord. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> so you, that's just that there are in my book, which is about that thick, as you, you know, as you know, there are 1400 remedies and that's just scratching the surface. Yeah. Wow. So you that's can, you can make a remedy <coughs> slight aside, you can make a remedy out of anything. So they're normally from five, uh, five different kingdoms. So the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the mineral kingdom, and then you've got sarcodes and nosodes as well, which are to a lesser extent. Um, but you can make a remedy out of weird things like rainbows, moonlight, lightning, if you need to. <laughs> it's, yeah, really? it's pretty amazing. Yeah, really. Oh, so there was kind of my, it does, I know. But so I'll give you an example. So one of my um, college lecturers gave an example, and I'll, I'll, I'll use his. And he said that there was a little girl who'd come with a rash on her hands, and the rash had appeared when they'd got a tortoise as a pet. Okay, so mm. absolutely fine, got this tortoise. Um, and then she ha- tortoise had obviously, um, shall we say, done a number two. And she oh, was cleaning lovely. up the tortoise, obviously cleaning it up. And this was how the rash had started. There was nothing else that she was allergic to. So huh. what they did was... They took a little bit of that, put it in a plastic bag and made a remedy out of it and the rash and gave it back to the little girl and the rash went away. So this is coming back to the principle of like cures like. So belladonna that I mentioned earlier, Mm. um, if you have a few berries of, um, you know, deadly nightshade, which is what it is, um, you will have a fever. But belladonna is one of our main remedies for fever. So we would use it to treat fever. Mm. 
So I guess you could say the girl had a bit of a tutus. Yeah, no, that's terrible. Just, <laughs> just, 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 just edit that. Edit that. Yeah, she, yeah. she's going to switch her mic and camera off and just go. <laughs> she's like, no, I'm not, not taking other, part in this. <laughs> yeah. The other tool that I have is, um, which another alternative paradigm you might not have heard of, is the back flower remedy. So a lot of people have heard of rescue remedy. Mm. It's a little yellow bottle, um, you know, found in, in most high street pharmacies where yeah, people the shops. use it for. Yeah, and they use it for, you know, things like panic attacks or helping you get through driving tests, you know, exams, mm. stressful situations, basically. Um, but it's actually one of 38 individual flower remedies. So I've learned about that and I have wow. the whole set and they are fabulous for emotional um, issues. OK, so mm. they're very gentle, but they're very powerful. They do work on more of a physical level, but they can work really, really well with the home alongside the homeopathy. Um, mm. depending on what the patient needs. So it's just another tool to um, mm. to help business owners that they can they can treat themselves with it because you can learn about mm. backflowers yourself. So Happy days. So anxiety, yeah. if you can reduce your anxiety, you can bring down your stress and your, um, what was that word I said a little while ago? Um, adrenaline? Yeah, that. So you could, you <laughs> could bring down your okay. dependency on adrenaline to keep you going if you could reduce your stress maybe. Would that, sort would that even of. be logical? I think it's... Yeah, I, I can see what you're saying. Um, I would slightly amend that and say um, it's not the adrenaline that's causing the problem. It's what it's doing in the body. So when you have, you know, a panic attack or, or you're, you're stressed or you're nervous, you know, we all know, you know, your heart starts going, you start sweating, you know, um, you might mm -hmm. start to feel a bit dizzy or a bit faint, um, you know, mm -hmm. and when you're having a panic attack, you can feel like you're you're about to die because you you really your body genuinely thinks there's a T-Rex right here and he's about to eat <laughs> you. OK, mm. and that's the problem. We, we may be civilized, but our you know, we've been cavemen and women for much longer than we have civilized. So our brains haven't evolved. Our, our biology and our chemistry haven't evolved. So what we need to do is to, first of all, address the physical side so someone has something to take when they're experiencing the panic attack but also a longer term solution to say well how can we reduce these panic attacks over a longer period of time or completely avoid them and some of that advice is dietary um so obviously we're going to come on to talk about sort of nutrition um mm. but for example orange juice caffeine and chocolate all are adrenal stimulant real orange they um <sighs> They're all adrenal Busted. stimulants. So what, what that means is I would advise someone for two months if they're suffering with um, panic attacks to actually avoid those things for two months because what they're doing is mm. they're kind of stimulating your adrenals. So your adrenals are kind of already running at half half mast type thing and then you mm. get a panic attack and it's like, boom, like this, you know. Mm. So if you can remove that base layer, then, you know, that's a good thing. So it's, Take away it's, those trigger, uh, triggers as it were. This is why it's holistic. It's not just, I'm not just going to give you some remedies and run off. It's, I'm going to give yeah. you nutritional advice, you know, remedies, um, you know, other techniques, but we, we'll come on to, to talk about mm. that. So, plan to fix four. yourself up. Yeah. Um, come. Cool. Number four. <laughs> <laughs> I need come you on the show on. every week. Much yeah, I know. <laughs> come on. Come on. Yeah. Right. Um, so, what other self improvement changes can we make? Okay. So, a lot of people um, struggle with changing their habits. OK, so there's a really good book that I read. It, it is American, so you only need to read one sixth of it because they repeat themselves six times, obviously. But <laughs> it's called again. The Power of... I'll say it again, yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Only six times, though, yeah. Um, it's called The Power of Habit. OK, so they explain in this book really well um, how a habit is formed. OK, so the obviously you've got um, why you want to do the habit in the first place, what prompts you to do that. Um, the middle part is actually doing the habit and then your reward at the end. So basic, you know, psychology 101, you've got a rat in a lab. It presses the food lever and you get the, it presses a lever. Lol, that's kind of how my CFS read its ugly head amazingly when I went on holiday. Ah, interesting. And yeah, I, apologies I've for the never delay on that Susan. One, Susan. No, no, yeah. Oh, she's fine. lovely. You meet her, she's wonderful. Um, okay. So you've got a rat in a lab and it presses the lever and it gets a food pellet. So... The rats probably initially pressed the food lever going, oh, this is a bit bored. I'm a bit bored now. I'm going to press this. Oh, I get a reward. So it then starts to press the lever because it's got a reward. And if mm. you compare this to all of the habits that we all have. So I think, Rich, you and I were talking about brushing your teeth, that it's pretty mundane brushing your teeth. So, yes, we know we need to clean our teeth. But that menthol, dull. that kind of fresh minty zing that you get at the end, 
Mm. That's not actually cleaning your teeth, but it gives you that sense of reward that I've cleaned my teeth. So the feeling can, of cleanliness sort of thing. Yeah. So if you can attach, um, you know, attach um, a habit that you want, you know, to change or a behavior that you want to change onto an existing mm. habit. So you're boiling the, the kettle for a cup of tea and you want to try and improve your, your squats technique or introduce some exercise into your life. So you're boiling the kettle you might be standing about, you might be checking your phone. Well, what if you were to do 10 squats instead? And then, you know, the next week you say, oh, that was pretty easy. Let me do 15 squats. So you're tacking it onto a daily thing that you do anyway mm. and slowly increase it. You know, the, it's unrealistic to say, oh, right, well, I want to get fit. I'm going to run a marathon next week. It's just <laughs> not going to happen, is it? You know, you need no. to plan and and build it in. So that's one of the yeah, things I would say. Need to, yeah, the fast moving vehicle, with the lights on it then. <laughs> yeah exactly the other thing i would say is choosing nutritious food okay mm. so it's it, it's not i don't like to talk about you know good and bad food okay and you know not all calories are created equal as i said last week when when richard turner was on um like you know you could <laughs> yeah you could which is what i said last week that an avocado is very calorific but it's extremely good for you because it's got good fats mm. it's got soluble fiber um it's got a lot of copper There's in a lot of it, as well. in it as well isn't it? Well, this is, this Did you is say good copper? Fats. Copper, yes. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So, <laughs> more I never on that knew later. that. I would yeah. never have known that. Yeah, but uh. copper is needed for proper zinc absorption. So, we're back to your immune system again. Yeah. So, oh, so without all... the copper, does any zinc you take? Was, well, it's, be... it, it's in a balance. A the, the copper and zinc are in a balance. So, yeah. Huh. Um, but it's, it, you know, you could argue, would you put cheap petrol in your Formula One car? No, you wouldn't. So you've got to treat your body. You know, there's a lot of talk about self-care. You know, oh, I'm going to have a face pack. I'm going to do my nails. The thing is, every time you make a choice about what you're putting in your mouth or on your skin, you are practicing self-care. So, mm. you know, I'm not going to lie. I love chocolate you know, crisps, all of that mm. stuff, but it has its place. 80 to 90% of the time I eat healthily. And then when I do have a blowout, I don't feel guilty because I'm like, well, I exercise, I've earned this. And most of the yeah. time I eat healthily. So it's it's making that switch, but it's, so it's not seeing something as a diet as such. This is, no, I'm going to start off slow and this is, I'm not then going back, you know? Mm. So you could say, right, I'm going to have a carrot every day with my dinner. And then you can move it up to, you know, either another vegetable or, you know, other veg and sort of, again, the same thing with the squats, basically. Mm. Um, and would you just a balance a carrot on top of a Mars bar? It's a bit <laughs> tricky. You just like very. poke it in the Mars bar. Yeah, it'd be yeah. very crunchy. The last thing I would say on that is, is exercise as well, which we'll touch on later. But the main thing with exercise mm. is doing something you enjoy. I've seen so many people mm. who, you know, they go to the gym and slog it out and they absolutely hate it. Um, because they think that's what they're meant to do. And I'm like, well, mm. if you hate it, you're not, you're, you're unlikely to continue. You're going back to the habits of, you know, we, we, we need that reward at the end. Mm. Um, you know, the, the exercise that I do, I absolutely love it. If someone said to me, oh, can you go, you know, I don't know, for a run or swimming? I'm like, actually, no, I really don't like, or yoga mm. or those are really, but for someone else, that's their favorite mm. thing ever, you know, or dancing or Whatever that movement is, you know, rock climbing, mm. you know, it doesn't really matter what the movement is yeah. as long as you're enjoying it, you know, and then I'm, you're getting those. In, now you can say endorphins. This is the bit with endorphins. No, no, no. I was going to say, <laughs> I, I, don't you spend your spare time breaking bricks with the side of your hand? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, I do. I should. Yeah, I, I've done kickboxing for 19 years, so that's slightly different to breaking. Yeah. Ouch. Um, bricks with the side of my hand. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do spin and I do body pump and I love all of those. But. You know, well, equally, there's people who love doing yoga or um, mm. dancing or, you know, running or rock climbing or whatever it is. Yeah. It's finding it's finding something you enjoy because you're going to more likely to do it again and continue, you know. So, yeah, I know yesterday me and my wife were out for a walk and literally by the end of, we, by the, end of the first kilometer, she said, she said, uh, she, I had this sort of glazed over look on my face and she said, you're right. I went, I'm so bored. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, well, you've still got four kilometers to go. I was like, I'm so bored. Yeah. This walking yeah. is so boring. Well, this is the thing. You know, you've got to make it more interesting. You've got to either give, you know, some people work well with targets, you know, or, mm. I, you know, can I do this run in a, in a, you know, beat your own personal best, you know, all this sort of, can I do it five minutes, yeah. you know, shorter time? Um, and some people don't work good with targets. It's, they just, it's a routine and that's what works for them. So, mm. 
But okay, um, no, we've got, we got, we got a wonderful person to come on next week, actually, to talk about this sort of stuff. Rich, um, yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mr. Turner has yeah. told us to have our trainers that are ready and stand by a bed, so it's going to be fun. Uh, you can't, just, you can't, we- you can't wear them on your ears, though, Rich. Yeah, you can't. No, <laughs> no, no, no. This is where I turn my camera off and go. Yeah, I'm doing it honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuffing a Mars bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I just right. broke the camera. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. <laughs> right. Next, um, next point, Rich. Next point. Next go point. On. Oh my gosh, she's racing along. I'm racing. Uh, well, we still got the still got the other bits to do. So you know. Well, I know, right? Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> so. This is one that got me interested when she said this, that we were going to talk about this. Uh, yes. So improving our happiness levels. So the thing is, um, a lot of people think that, you know, oh, if I lose two stone, I'll be happy. Um, if I buy that car, I'll be happy. Happiness is not external. OK, it's it's in here. OK, in, in the touchy feelies. OK, so things like so how can you cultivate happiness if you don't know where to start? So I kept a gratitude diary for two years. Um, my sister asked me to do it actually and I thought a little bit "Mm, really it feels a bit twee feels a bit kind of contrived but actually it served a big purpose Um, at the end of each each calendar year I would then look back and read all the things I'd written and some days it was only one thing Um, you know I put a load of laundry on or you know I I, you know I saw a really nice um, you know flowers in the garden or you know I walked past and the smell of you know, fresh rain on. <laughs> Sorry, you carry Perhaps on. This... I'm just. Oh, okay. Bringing these up as we're going. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, there you go. Susan suggested listen to podcast while walking. I can recommend about sixteen podcasts. There you go. Yeah. That's that's yeah, good. To see. Yeah, one have to one have to talk to the wife then. That'll, be, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not I'm not yeah. saying anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear screaming, it's because she's in the next room. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the trainer comes flying at your head. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Bloody flower um, jug. <laughs> so gratitude diaries are worth doing. Um, it helps you to notice the small things. So things like, you know, noticing a small child laughing or, you know, I like the smell of rain on tarmac, you know, things like this. Um, mm. You know, notice, you know, getting into freshly laundered sheets. All of these things don't involve necessarily, you know, money. It's just noticing those small things. And the more you look for them, the more you'll find them. Mm. And it's it. so it might feel contrived at the beginning, but it does help. Um, again, doing a creative activity, whether that's gardening, painting, singing, um dancing anything that you know doing a park run and it's it's doing that thing where you you have a sense of community okay so you can Mm. go and sing you know with a church choir or you can do a park run you know running by yourself is one thing but if you're running with a group of people again coming back to the the monkeys the chimpanzees and bonobo monkeys they live in a large social group and it's got lots of hierarchies Mm. we're human beings we we need that social interaction um so again one of the reasons I do a gym class is because I have really good friends at the gym you know Mm. I like being in that class setting rather than just kind of you know I'm on the treadmill and you know and that's it um you have that interaction so that also bolsters happiness and decreases loneliness as well so happy days yeah I think um also David uh so David Attenborough he's done a lot of stuff on monkeys and how they live in packs and how complicated it all is um, it's a troop of monkeys, not a, not a pack. But okay, oh we'll, sorry, we'll give you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we've been. I think we found a regular co-host for the show. You know um, what? Oh my god, she's keeping it on track really well. I mean, it's I am. 40, Hey, uh, you know, we're not we're not overrunning on my on my shift. Yeah, at fifty nine minutes. She'd be like, right, I'm gone. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but um, yeah, so it okay. is. It, whilst it does sound a bit cheesy or corny, um, yeah. you know, if if you're not doing stuff that makes you happy and not trying to remember it, then what the hell are you doing? It's it's not so much remembering it. It's you know, if you write down three positive things before you go to bed at night, rather mm. than I don't know, watching the news or a scary well, movie or something like your stressful. Diary. So yeah, you, it helps yeah. you remember the stuff that's actually important. Yeah, it does. Just, spending yeah. all day worrying about the misery and oh god do this and then yeah you're actually just you're forgetting all the little things that make you happy and you're focusing on the stuff that makes you feel not 100 percent. yeah and it's law of attraction if you focus on the positive you know positive mental attitude whatever you want to call it mm. um you know and that can make a difference to um people's um 
you know, recovery in terms of either mental illness or physical illness. You know, if you have two patients who've got the same diagnosis of cancer, for example, and one of them goes, right, I'm going to fight this. I'm going to, you know, improve my diet. I'm going to do, you know, whatever the doctors mm. tell me, I'm, but I'm going to research alternative things as well. Yeah. And I'm going to tell all my family I love them, but I'm going to really fight this. And you have the other, per, you know, person B who goes, oh, well, you know, that's it. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I'll take the tablets. I give her up who, on yeah. Who do you think is going to have a higher chance of success or, you know, of, of beating the illness or surviving? Yeah, you know? exactly. It's, it's, it's that, basically. You know? And even if their so, chances are the same, the person with the more positive attitude is certainly going to make the most of it. Yes, um, exactly. So, yep. Yeah. I'm glad we're chomping through the questions as I have to go at eight shop. Hang on. Susan, Susan, see, even Susan complained about the time. <laughs> well, there you go. I don't want to miss a <laughs> thing. It's so interesting. Anything. Oh, thank you, Susan. That's oh, really... happy days. So I told you she was nice. She should meet her. She's lovely. Um, I I, I will meet her. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. You better. You better. Um, So from there, where the hell were we? Yes, Um, we've done. So so that was... Happiness levels. Yeah. So although it sounds cheesy, it's not. It's it's just taking a bit of time each day to actually try and put some of the bad stuff to one side and remember the stuff that's actually making you happy because then you might remember to do more of it, right? Exactly. And it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, this whole thing of, oh, if I lose two stone, I'll be happy. Or I'll, you know, if I buy the car, I'll be happy. The thing is, you're, you're delaying your own happiness and no one else is doing it apart from you. If you, you know, it's, it's carpe diem. It's, you know, we only have one life, live it. You know, if you want to start feeling happier, you're in control of that. Do, do it now. You know, if there's something mm-hmm. that's unmaking you happy, unmaking you unhappy or a person or a situation, you may not be able to change that situation, but you can still find the good is looking mm. for that silver lining, you know. Well, the, the good news is so. all of our viewers have just logged off to go and do something good. <laughs> Thanks. You've motivated you've motivated the whole audience to leave and go and do something that worthwhile and make, that makes them happy. Nobody, nobody watching. Oh no. No, right. that's it. We got to, well, it's such a good show. They've all you've mo- inspired them all to bugger off and do something fun. Oh, good. Um, so we can do all, all the really <laughs> bad jokes now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Our job here is done. I think. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, have you know, got to the top five top tips yet? God, yeah. We don't, we don't need them. They've, they've, don't they've learned them. it all. Oh, um, well, throw it away. Okay. It, you're, you're that good that we don't need any top tips. Um, <laughs> but I know Susan's hanging on for those top tips. So okay, but right, um, cool. yeah, I mean, is, would you say that covers pretty much all of it about improving your happiness levels? <sighs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, mm. it's. I mean, if if the only thing I would say is if there is genuinely, <coughs> um, you know, if someone is suffering with a mental health need mental health illness which which I have done and I'm very open about speaking about it um Mm. I I had counseling I had really good counseling for um about 18 months two years and yeah it 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 fixed this you know um and I think I was lucky enough to be able to afford private counseling um but it's if there is a major issue don't stick your head in the sand deal with it you know and there are good people out there who can help you so indeed indeed yeah. yeah susan's looking forward to there she goes she's she's g us on now top tips oh she's there you go see time. she's like right come on richard let's do this yeah i know okay. right so as we near the end of the show um, yes. it's gone so fast this is ridiculous hey um, yeah i know i was so, keeping you on track as well i know this is i'm being bullied that's yeah. why um which is fine i don't mind that uh, <laughs> so let's go over to your top tips because i know you've you've sent me a whole bunch yes. of um some really cool stuff Twice. I sent you five. So, so. no. Oh, I should have no. gone for that. No. no, I even I even labelled them. That's no. The first one I is know. sleep. This I labelled them for you. Well, <laughs> have I gone too far? No, the first one is sleep. Oh, you're terrible. We do. I know. I'm dreadful at this. Right. Okay. No. Well, that, that was that was meant to be yeah. me helping business owners. Actually, if you go back, I know I should have showed that the first time around, but. Yeah, you should have done. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's got to go around. Well, I've broken, broken it. I've broken it. I've broken it. Right. Okay. So it started out with that one. Yeah. Then it went to that okay. one. So this one is just showing the back flower remedies are the little bottles um, that are next to me. And the blue kit is the basic remedy kit. So that's just showing gotcha. people. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's a bit. Days. That was meant to be before, but, you know, this is Richard. So, okay. Right. So, first top tip is sleep okay well, i can't get everything right so, all the time that would be too too boring <laughs> okay so sleep as you can see gorgeous pussy cat there um so good quality sleep is hugely important um and a few things that i would say about this are um so sleep hygiene okay 
So what do I mean by sleep hygiene? It's the non-drug things that you can do to help your sleep. So things like earplugs, wearing an eye mask or an eye pillow to block out obviously the light and, and the noise, having a warm drink before bed, okay? Um, that basically mimics us having um, a, a breast milk feed okay so you're nice and warm and cozy you're having a nice warm milky drink and then clunk you're off okay the weighted weighted blanket they are particularly popular at the moment um so a weighted blanket has lots of little tiny glass beads in it and it weighs the same as you so they custom make it to your own weight um and again that mimics us being cuddled by our mums or being swaddled as a baby so we feel secure um as we were in the womb and so we then drift off to sleep mm. Um, are they the ones that are so heavy that you don't pull it over you, you just get under it wherever it's delivered? Yeah, yeah, that's the ones, yeah. <laughs> um, the the other thing I would say is also having a bedroom that's cool enough. So it should be 17 degrees C, which is quite cool. A lot of people mm. go, oh, that sounds a bit. But the idea is if you have a warm um, bath or a shower and then get into a much cooler bedroom, you are mimicking um, the sun going down. Okay, so again, remember if we're in, you know, a caveman, cavewoman scenario, uh -huh. When the sun goes down, there's no light, there's no heat, it's bloody cold. So mm. you're, this tells your brain, right, we need to produce melatonin. It's sleepy time. Let's go to sleep. So we're it mimicking. It does encourage you to snuggle up a bit more under the covers once it, when it's cold. Under your weighted well. blanket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the other last thing I would say about sleep is magnesium spray. Okay, so 80% of the Western population are deficient in magnesium. Magnesium is our, it, it helps. To relax our muscles it helps us go off to sleep it also helps cramps but the reason i say spray is because it's better absorbed through the skin so transdermally so if you're having oral magnesium it's very poorly absorbed so mm. um you can buy a spray you spray it on your leg any large area of skin before you go to bed and it'll just help you drop off to sleep all over your stomach <laughs> wherever you want um, wherever you want funny yeah. you should say that because magnesium is in a lot of sports drinks um, mm, to avoid cramping that. And it and yes. it does work. Yes, it does. Uh, okay, number happy two. Days. Uh, diet. Okay, diet. Yeah. So, as we mentioned before, eating nutritious food food is the best fuel for the body. Um, so I will quantify that now. So organic fruit and veg, lots of it. Organic milk and meat. Okay. Um, I know that it's more expensive, but that reflects the welfare of the animals. But it also reflects the fact that non-organic milk, for example has is 20% pus okay um quite apart from the hormones yeah quite apart from the hormones that they pump into the cows Yuck. and all of that yeah so what the way i do it is i then have a couple of vegetarian meals during the week to kind of balance out the cost of the meat and the milk okay so if you can afford it's a bit like free range eggs to me it's a no brainer yeah. you know why would you want to buy eggs where you know from caged hens where you know they're, they're stressed mm. that energy is going to go into the eggs the meat and the milk okay filtered water and fermented foods okay so filtered water again with regards to the hormones um and also fermented foods are to do with your gut health okay so a lot of people may have heard of the gut brain axis or the gut brain connection so 70% mm -hmm. of our immune system is in your gut, okay? And 80% of serotonin is produced there. So mm. serotonin is our feel-good <clears throat> hormone. This is what is, you know, low or missing when people are feeling low and depressed, okay? Mm. So happy happy gut, happy brain. So fermented foods are fantastic for feeding your gut microbiome and keeping it healthy. So things like sauerkraut, kefir, kimchi, uh, temper, miso, uh, bio live yogurt. There's lots of lots and lots of different ones. And it's it's not just having yogurt, it's having variety, eating it little and often. You know, when you go to Wagamama's and you've got the, the little bowl of pickles on the side, um, that's that's fermented pickles. That's so that you are designed nice. to eat little and often with the apple cider vinegar, all these sorts of things. So okay. Happy days. Okay. Next could one. Use our, a specialist gut expert, hopefully coming on in the month as well. Oh, fantastic. Well, she'll I probably know, be right? repeating a lot of what I'm, um, probably more, probably in a better way than me. Probably quite a gross so. discussion for now. but <laughs> Okay, yeah. So that's, so this is about, okay, relaxation. So tip number three is reducing your stress and relaxation. Okay. So we don't all have a private beach like this woman to go and, you know, pretend to meditate. Okay. Mm. So what can we do? So things like meditation apps, yoga, um, breathing techniques, the back 
flowers that I mentioned before, um, keeping a journal. OK, so again, before you go to bed at night, rather than having all these thoughts circulating, you just do a, you know, like a screen dump, a brain dump and just write it all down. Get it all out of your head. OK, um, the other thing which we mentioned before, uh, sorry, previous to this, Richard, was laughter therapy. Um, this kind of originated in India and basically groups of people get together and just have a really, they just start laughing at each other and laughter is contagious, but it's so, so good for us. Um, Sounds fantastic, it boosts, doesn't it? It's amazing. It boosts your mood. You know, this is why, you know, coming, you know, connecting back to doing things that, you know, that make you happy, um, you know, spending time with friends or watching comedy, you know, all of that is going to make you feel good. And you're going to get a workout. Your cheeks and your stomach are certainly mm. going to get a workout, you know. So, so, sounds like some of the networking events I've been to. <laughs> only when you tell your terrible jokes, Richard, yeah. I know, right? It. Okay, right. That's that one. Relaxation. Yes. Done. Right, exercise, okay. So we touched on this before. Do what you enjoy, okay. Um, we're designed to move you know, as Richard Turner said last week, you know, too much time being sedentary. Oh, hey, Z. Hi, Z. Thanks. Thanks, Danila, from having previous conversations. I now take magnesium, but not not by spray yet. OK. <laughs> uh -huh. Thanks, Zena. Um, <coughs> so, yeah. So obviously, you know, loads of endorphins from doing exercise. You you sleep better. Your mood is better. Um having a mixture to keep things interesting so mix things up if you've always done running then you know try something different or run in a different yeah. um you know different route can just you know ring the changes um obviously to rest if you're injured but homeopathic remedies can help you recover quicker with your injuries anyway and the last thing i would say which i think richard turner touched on last week um was if mm. you want to shift weight you need to lift weight so the body pump classes that i do they are 70 to 80 percent women OK, and it's not about bulking up. It's about tone. So, you know, we, it's quite often we see a bloke come in and look around and go, oh, I'm going to really load up my bar for like squats. And you're like, yeah, no. After about 30 seconds, they put it down and are red and sweating. It's like, yeah, this is a marathon, <laughs> not a sprint. You know, they're looking yeah. at all us women going, oh, I can lift more than her. Um, it's taken me three years to get to this point. So, no, you can't, yeah. you know. So, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Happy days. OK, so that's that one. Cool. Next one. one. Yep. Click, click. OK, so joy and passion. So basically what sparks your joy? OK, so kind of touching on the happiness that we talked about before, but it's also touching on a spiritual connection as well. So it doesn't have to be religion. You know, um, it's finding, you know, when people say, oh, I'm in the zone, you know, so they're doing a puzzle or they're mm. doing painting or listening to music or singing or writing all of these, or you know, cooking, whatever it is, finding those things yeah. that you actually really enjoy doing. I mean, I, you know, gardening, for example, you know, some people, they say, oh, I can garden for hours. You know, I, I can't stand gardening. I'd kill everything green. But <laughs> for them, it's their... Just a change their, order everything. <laughs> yeah. It, it's mm. kind of feeding your soul, if, if you like. It's, it's kind of mm. feeding your soul and what makes you happy, you know. Um, and it, it releases oxytocin, which is our, our feel-good hormone, you know, our love yeah. hormone. Oh. I think if the cool like. kids these days use the term smashed it, right? That's more about, achie zone. I would say more about achievement. This is more, or, more about or getting in the zone or, or being on point with something. I think the cool kids say yeah. this is the, you know, got to get yeah. down with the lingo. I'm nailing it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Happy days. So, uh, okay. Yeah, so that was, that was quite course, quick, but, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if yeah, the, anyone before. anyone watching has got any questions because um, that was quite um, quick. Really, Susan has disappeared. She said, "Very sorry, I had to disappear because oh, she had another one." Oh bless! That she had to get to for eight o'clock. Oh yes, um, okay, that's cool. So she's spending her Wednesday night watching webinars and, and watching stuff online. So she's learning, days. learning. Yeah. yeah, well, exactly. She's ten steps ahead yeah. of those who are just sitting there watching TV. Yeah. Um, but no, no, no questions actually. I think you've probably explained everything so well that people don't really? actually really need to okay. ask anything. <laughs> um, oh, oh, it's quite often the case where the, the lack of questions is probably a testament to the fact that it's been explained so well. Okay, um, fair enough. Did it, or they've all just gone. Or they've all just gone. Yeah, no, they're still there. They're still there, except for Susan. Oh, okay, except for um, Susan. Okay, all right. But cool. um, no, happy days. Um, so no one's got any questions, then um, I, I think we've okay. uh, managed to knock out a rather good show. Um, you can, of course, find out more about Nina and what she does at uh, homeopathicharmony.co.uk. Um, yep. And very shortly after this show, you can also read a wonderful blog that she's going to be sending over. 
Um, yep. So you can read that at wesh.biz, which is the website for the show. So every guest that comes on the show features a blog post on the website. And so there's a lot more information there. And it gives them a chance to go into a bit more detail and stuff and uh, share with you some references to other different things um, and some wonderful insights into what they do and how it's done. Um, so you can read all about that at wesh.biz very shortly. Uh, I'm sure knowing Neela, she probably wrote the blog post in the three minutes before the show because she's incredibly organized. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, the blog, I just need to email it to you. I'm done. Yeah. You see what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean, some guests don't email it for months or never. Um, but yeah, she, she's all, all done and dusted. Um, yep. But that's what she's like to work with. Um, but um, that's it's, really. It's not, it's, it's not OCD, Richard. It's organized. No, that's, that's it's it not is. OCD. Yeah, it's just yeah. organized. It's just being organized, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> having your ducks lined up in a row. Uh, but if you enjoyed today's show, then you know, hit the, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button as well, because it, it really does help to sort of show me and the the other guests that want to come on the show that actually it is growing and it is something that worth, that's worth carrying on with, um, and it, it's worth because it does take a fair bit of time to put the show together and mucking around, emailing guests backwards and forwards, and practicing and showing them how the stuff works, and uh, sometimes making sure even they've got the equipment they need if you have to. Um, so the, yes. some of the links we go to to make this happen um, are, are quite <laughs> unusual. Um, but, you know, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button or share share one of the show videos with some of your friends who might enjoy it as well. And um, so really, that's really all I've got to say. Um, next week, we've got Richard Turner coming back. Um, so we'll be turning off the cameras because I don't want to watch anyone watch, watch us sweating and jumping around. Um I and mean, that's pretty much it. If you want to find out a bit more about it, um, check out our social media posts where there will be show announcements coming up on LinkedIn and Facebook and stuff and all the usual channels. Um, anything Zena would like? Uh, Zena? Nope. <laughs> Wrong person. Nope. <laughs> this is where I get murdered now for calling her Zena. Uh, <laughs> is there anything yes. you'd like to add before, before, they, before we sign off, Neela? Um, I, I think the only thing is, obviously, you mentioned my website. There's a free 30-minute phone call um, that people can book with me. So Susan or whoever, if they want to just chat with me, um, it's free. You can, you know, have a chat with me if there's something specific you want to talk about. Um, awesome. And I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well, so come and say hello. Happy days. And uh, that pretty much, folks, wraps it up for this week, and we will see you again next week at 7 um, on Wednesday. And uh, okay, ho cool. hopefully between now and then you have a wonderful week, a great weekend. And uh, I look forward to bringing you some more useful information next week. Until then, okay. we shall say goodbye. Thanks, goodbye. Bye. I'll press that button there. <laughs>